Hey everybody, welcome, yeah! Today I am joined by Orlando Aracena. Orlando is a Mexican Cuban American artist famous for his ultra clean and vibrant vector style. Yeah. yeah. His illustrations have been featured on official IMAX movie posters in Empire and other entertainment magazines, Steelcase and Special Edition, Blu-rays, and even, and I'm not kidding here, the startup screen for Adobe Illustrator. That is one heck of a resume. Uh, Orlando, thank you so much for taking the time out of uh, what I'm guessing is an utterly insane schedule um, for you to come here and talk to me. So thank you so much. Hey, de nada, man. You know, it's all good. Uh, oh. Thank you for having me here. And uh, can I live here, man? I love it. I do. So yeah, you can. I just have can. to call up the wife and be like, hey, get on the next flight and if, we're living here. If you just toys. don't tell people you live here, They'll never find you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I need to know this. Uh, I need to know uh, what exactly vector art is. What is the total opposite of Photoshop? Okay, what Photoshop is Photoshop? Is so forgiving. Vector is so unforgiving. Really? Yeah. No. It's uh, where you're able to smear paint and colors in Photoshop and airbrush. Vector is all about grabbing a pen and plotting points and making shapes and then finding a way to uh, blend everything possible when there is no blend mode or or, or switches to easily make that happen. The benefit about Vector is that um, there's no real DPI that you need to set. I'm gonna get geeky right now. I was gonna say, I don't right. know anything you're saying right, right now, DPI, but I'm DPI super could be invested. totally translated in so what, many what ways. What does DPI mean? Uh, that's per inch, I believe, or just resolution. Okay. You know what? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm sorry. You know? No, but that's but, great. But, but, but it's, it's, the beautiful thing is that it's scalable. Okay. What you make. I mean, Vector started off in the um, commercial industry world for logos. All right. right. And logos need to be scalable and stretched out. So the way that I play with it is that I, I broke the shit out of Illustrator. And Adobe totally loved it. And yeah. I was like, well, just give me more time and I'll break it more. And I tend to just paint and, and do it un uh, non-conventionally than what the standard is. I was gonna I was gonna bring that up too because you actually describe yourself in, in artist profiles as the Mexican who changed the look of vector, which is really interesting. Now can you explain what exactly you mean by that? Because that's a very it's a very rad phrase to hear that you, you kind of broke something, it's, you it's, redefined it's, it's it. It's easy, it's just like this. That's the change of look of vector. Right? I, that's you that's know? exactly it. I'm it's, finally it's, it's, learning it's, about it's, your it, process. It's, it's like, no, honestly, it's uh Adobe, Adobe told me that you know when, when they had used the uh, startup screen, that they hadn't come across an artist that was uh, integrating with their with Illustrator so much so that it was going into like a realm of Photoshop and gradients and colors and and blend modes where everything before beforehand was like just static images and static color fills and not a whole lot of blending or or mm -hmm. um, airbrushing you know brush strokes yeah. things that that beforehand is all just latent shapes. It seems like you're thinking like, this is a very easy thing. For me, uh, I'm, I'm sort of getting it, but I'm, uh, I'm a big dumb guy. Bro, it's uh, the best, it's, a, it's, it's my favorite video game out of like, all the creative things that I could use. Yeah. Cause it's like every, every moment that I jump in there, I'm trying to break it, literally. You know, I want to complain and be like, yo, you know what, it's not doing this. And That's at times it's like, uh, seriously, it's the best video game when you're having to meet up with the big boss at the end and you kick the shit out of it and like you're like, yeah, yeah, I did it. And the client's happy or you end up failing and you're like, all right, well, I got to rejigger it and figure out how I'm going to beat that big boss out. So your your artistic process, it seems like you view this sort of as, as a game and a challenge, which is, I think, really, really fun. Um, now, what are some of the advantages, uh, but also what are the challenges of vector art? Like what are... There, there. I'm assuming uh, great things and things that help you, and then things that can be stumbling blocks. What are those things? Um, well, the thing is that there's still a lot of development that's going into it because the the uh, graphics community, ever since you know agencies and computers have become more um, economically fr friendly, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of our a lot of people have migrated to and stayed within the Photoshop community. Really, and there's been a lot of development for that brushes, technology, AI. You know, now you got Photoshop that's able to do animation and video, and you have an all-in-one. And yeah. Illustrator's kind of been lost to the side. And now it's just, you know, they just announced that it's, they're giving it a lot of breath. It's gonna come out on different platforms available, you know, for um, different tablets, and ZBook, 
And, you know, I'm happy to see that. Yeah, you're expecting Because now that. I'm like, okay, now there's hopefully going to be a resurgence and open door policy of other distri uh, manufacturers and, and um, programmers being able to go, okay, well, let's add this to it. Let's add okay. a bit more, another level of customizable brushes. Like in Photoshop, you could make a brush in a heartbeat and like that thing would soar and kill and you could do it out of a texture with Illustrator. It's not that easy because it's not meant to be, you know, like airbrushed out. Okay, so softened up in edges and so they're actually fixing some of those challenges. Then. Yeah, they're sort of adding a wider breadth. You said um, Adobe's fixing them as we speak <laughs> now. Yeah, good, good. I'm pretty sure they watch, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, now you started. Uh, like, how do you get your start as a commercial illustrator? Like, how did you get into that field specifically? I I, I totally uh, went the unorthodox way. You know, I went the long way. You went the long way. The long way. Seriously. Should we should all just fill in the gaps on that? <laughs> a lot Basically, of bodies left behind Yo, me. Yo, listen, listen. This. Honestly, what happened was that uh, I had graduated in 94 from Pratt M Institute okay. with a bachelor's in communication design, illustration. What happened was that in 94, computers had just overnight been issued into agencies and I couldn't go digital. So what I ended up doing was re-strategizing and I said, okay, well, if I want to work for Warner Brothers, I can't make it in there with the book that I have. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go from the ground up and see what happens. So I ended up going in and working at the uh, 57th Street flagship store in Manhattan really? as a greeter. I'm like, hey, welcome to Warner Brothers Studio Store. How are you doing? What's up? And I was working retail. And it wasn't until a few months later that I got my way up to the fourth floor, which is their uh, animation gallery. Their production sales, their original really? sales, their limited edition sales, and learning about that and having been flown out to Burbank Studios to become educated upon the history and realizing that uh, animation is one of two authentic, genuine American art forms. Jazz wow. is the other. So you come back and they're like, okay, now sell it. And, you know, you're kind of like a, a Toyota salesman, man. You're, you're trying to grab people and, hey, can I interest you on an original production sale? And then they look at the price and it's like, $3,500 and you're trying to give them the benefits of, of why they why should invest in it, you know? Piece. Wow. And I do, you talk do, you, about the history. do you have cells? Do you, do you have Oh yeah, I've got, I've got a few Batman cells uh, from the original. Yeah. From Batman the I have a Batman, I have a Batman when Beyond Scott, cell. When, yeah. when uh, Hamilton, Luke Hamilton was uh, the voice of the Joker. Oh, and Mark uh, Hamilton, yeah. Funny story was that, you know, I had a black book of clientele and Mr. Hamill was was in there. Great. And he would call me up every now and then, like, hey, Orlando, how you doing? I'm like... That's a really good Mark <laughs> Hamill impression, like, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to gloss over that. That was a really good Mark Hamill impression. That's so cool. So you got started in the Warner store. By the way, you're not the per the only person that I've met, by the way, that got started working in Warner retail <laughs> that is now sort of like, a, like on the higher end of that. That's so cool. I will also want to know, too, because you've done so much, uh, what exactly would you consider to be the proudest moments, the proudest sort of achievements of your career? Oh, man, there's been so many just because of having to, you know, revolve your, you know, who I was within the industry or what I needed to get out of the industry or what I needed to put myself into. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's one leg of the story. You know, the, the one that comes after that is I went and turned into, I uh, got applied uh, for um, a security guard position at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You're going to do a heist? Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we cut it right there. No, okay, no. Cut. Uh, no? No, no, but, okay, but, but it was cool because I ended up getting busted on post for drawing. You're not supposed to be drawing when you're a security guard. You're like man, manning like Renaissance art. And I'm there like, <laughs> you know? And the uh, president of the museum comes over and he's like, hey, get, beats the shit out of me verbally. And I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going to lose my job. He's like, no, let me see the book. Is it any good? And I'm like, here. And it's all ballpoint of like everything in his galleries. And he's like, what, what the fuck? And he's like, where's, where's, where is it all ballpoint? And I'm like, bro, I'm a kid from, from the Bronx, man. I, I didn't grow up with like vine charcoal and fancy pastels. I was like, it's all ballpoint. And I was like, but on a deeper note, it's like, I got I to gotta work with my mistakes, man. I got to make them look good or I got to hide them or start a new thing. I, there's no... Command undo, there's no erasing. I don't believe in that. Shit. Yeah, so you just kind of keep moving forward. That's really yeah. cool. So, uh, when you're looking at proudest achievements, what you're saying, because I'm looking there's, at you just being like, it was the steel book for this, you know, yeah, getting no. an empire cover, and you're like, no, it's actually about no, man, it's working a, at this job and having that. So, it's there, there's a lot of moments. There's, 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 there's working at Warner Brothers and handling uh, their animation gallery there, and then opening up a, another boutique uh, in Two World Trade. Okay, let me put it this way then. 
what are your what are the pieces that you consider to be the higher achievements? Uh, the one piece that I had hanging at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for a year. I love that. Um, early on when I was 24 and that ruined my whole ego because I was just like, <laughs> yeah, the gallery's gonna call me. I'm in like, in history books. I'm gonna no, do it, it for nothing. It was nothing, but it gave me a great push to just realize that uh, the art world or the commercial world is just tricky. And that's when I went into the, into the commercial world and started working for Atroma Studios. Lloyd Kaufman. Oh, you know? fun. I was at the tail end of when James Gunn was there, you know, and I was, I was just like, whoa. And then years later, it's like, I'm at, you know, Burbank Disney Studios, and I had just done a Day of the Dead series for the release of Guardians of the Galaxy 1, and he's there to do the press release, and I'm hiding in the, in the audience while all the questions are going off. And then finally, me and uh, Don Thompson, the owner of the Poster Posse, I get up and I ask him a question regarding Lloyd Kaufman, and he's like, Lloyd like, oh, Kaufman was in Guardians of the Galaxy. He had a cameo where he's yeah, yelling, he's yelling exactly. at Gamora in the prison. Yeah. Exactly. And that was like my first New York graphic design employment job. Uh, now, one of the pieces that you are, uh, are are super known for, I think, is the Thanos Infinity War illustration. Um, it, it originally appeared on the cover of Empire Magazine. Yeah. Like, how does that... What's that like? How did that happen? Did you do the piece first? Were you commissioned? To oh, do the I was piece commissioned. I was commissioned for it. Mm -hmm. I was commissioned for it, and um, they emailed me. And I've, you know, it was total one of those bucket list moments that I was able to just happily just have to say again, who is this? Wow, Empire. Okay, check that off. We're gonna <laughs> play. We're gonna play. And um, we rolled really, really fast, but proficient upon, you know, when I'm doing, when I am doing my concepting. You know, often at times I'll, I'll do just a few little thumbnails on paper, but I'm jumping on digital and I'm sending them colored sketches yeah. that are digital. So if they're able to want to pursue of any of them further, it's a lot easier for us to be able to just jump back into the work instead of, hey, here's I'm going to spend two weeks on pencils and another week on color and then hopefully we get it right and hopefully we don't have to spend more budget and time to go back and revisit that stuff. I think um, one of the beauties with going digital now and being proficient upon collaborating with what you have available for time and mm -hmm. what I have available for patience, you know, we're able to get it done. Yeah, the yeah. advent of the internet, I think, has really helped art progress so fast yeah. because you can get that information to them very fast, too. Yeah, so also the reason can... why I'm living in Colombia, though. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, the internet's good. Yeah, well, good. that, that being said, too, work on my tank, but you could do me. thumbnails, take a photo on a phone, send them to the person, yeah, and they'll be is. like, I like the third one you sent, so, this one. So, like, I sent over, like, uh, one thing about me is that I love passionately what I do. I love collaborating with people. Yeah. Uh, properties, studios, and I just sent them like an avalanche of, of of sketches and concepts and they're like, holy cow, this is it's kinda hard to, to pick. Do you have a favorite? And I was like, I kinda I kinda like this one. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, that's 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 what the, the family's saying. Let's go that yeah. way. Oh yeah. And um, it, it it made it to publish, it got printed, it got a great review, and from that point on, everyone's like I want to print. I want to print. I want to print. I want. I need a collection of it. I need a collection of it. And it so so happened that being a big fan of a sideshow, you know, I was I was like, okay, let's let's sacrifice the goats, light the red candles, and uh, let's send yeah, a, a hello letter to sideshow collectibles and sideshow art prints. And they responded back. You guys responded back, and we turned that into a real a real piece. They have such a great print division here at Sideshow. I really do enjoy division? all the stuff that they put up. This yeah, I mean, division they, they, in there. And you're a part an of that. Army. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's a, it's an army. It's an army of a few <laughs> and they are very good at what they do and uh, and I'm so happy that they brought you on. Um, hey, you have too. you have uh, like two pieces that we have as aluminum editions by the way. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like the aluminum editions we have um, there's the Thanos as well. The as, Thanos, uh, the, um, the Captain Marvel. Captain I Marvel. Yeah. Uh, you know, the kicker is being able to see the process of how that gets done and the magic behind um, where it goes from when I submit it. Yeah. And then, you know, seeing the end product, being amazed, being floored, and then having, you know, collectors actually DM me or email me and they'll send me pictures and it looks even better yeah. when it's hanging up in their collection or on their wall or, you know, they've got their little French bulldog, you know, 
it adds this level of it's, personality. It's, well, art it, is it about does. reactions. It does, you know, and and you know, um, I'm glad that we're able to offer it in 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 more than just one one substrate. In one, yeah, you one. Because everybody one has format, a preference, yeah. man. It's like. I love that. I th I think it's it's great to know because we ha we have to wrap up pretty soon. But I love how much uh, you are connected because art is supposed to be about the response and the fact that you are saying that people it's like seasoning. People are sending you these photos. They're DMing yeah. you these photos, and it's like you know you cooked the meal and then they add that little salt of what it means. Um, to them. I really love that. Uh, I'm so stoked to have had you on here. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we can expect a lot more hey. prints from Orlando in the future. Hey, we've got a few more working on right now. I can't uh, mention it. But we can't say it out loud. We, we get in trouble. The Thanos uh, Infinity War and Captain Marvel prints by uh, Orlando are still available. See all of them by him right here at side.show slash Mexifunk, which I absolutely love. You like that? It's right. It's right there. It's right there. La, now it's la, there. It's we got it. We la, all together. La, 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 it's all good. There it is. La, 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 la. The fact that I can end an interview with a, a full-on rump shot, I am happy about. <laughs> Thank you, Orlando, so wait, wait, much. Was, was it the was tramp stamp showing? <laughs> was, was the tramp stamp showing? Mexican flag with the eagle. When I, you know what? For me, all of mine are trips. So it's fine. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for watching. We appreciate that. Don't forget to check out side.show slash Mexifunk. Also, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and, and don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you can get more from Sideshow Collectibles. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Orlando. Okay. And don't forget to let your geek sideshow. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under Product Info. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show.